America is unique. It's the richest democracy with the worst poverty. So for a long time, we cared about poverty. We've talked about things like welfare reform, folks having jobs, good jobs, no jobs, bad jobs. We've talked about the rise of uh, prison, and all those topics are incredibly important. But there was something missing, and what was missing was housing, and the fact that more and more Americans are spending so much of their income just on basic housing needs today. Most poor renting families spend at least half their income on housing costs. Forced to spend more than half their income on housing, on rent. And about one in four of those families spend over 70% of their income on housing. So we've moved from a place where evictions were weird in America and rare and drew crowds to a place that they're incredibly common in poor neighborhoods, destabilizing schools and communities and homes. So if you go into about any urban housing court all around the country, you see the face of our eviction epidemic, and it's moms with kids. You know, until recently, the housing court in the South Bronx in New York City had a daycare inside of it because there were so many kids coming through its doors. And African-American women, and moms in particular, who are below the poverty line, are evicted at incredibly high rates. So in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, for example, one in five black women who are renters uh, reports being evicted sometime in their life compared to one in 15 white women. That's incredible, that's a mass disparity. This is like the feminine equivalent to incarceration. We know that many of our poor African-American men are being locked up, but many of our poor African-American women are being locked out, and they are disproportionately bearing the brunt of the eviction crisis. Between 1995 and today, median rent has increased by over 70%. So there's this big gap between what poor families are bringing in and what they have to pay for a basic roof over their head. And then we might ask, well, where's public housing in here? Where's the, where's the government here? Don't they, don't they receive help? Must be able to support themselves financially and should not use welfare. And the answer is most don't. You know, only about one in four families who qualifies for assistance receives anything. And the waiting list for public housing in our big cities like DC or New York, the waiting list isn't counted in years, it's counted in decades. You know, and I think when we add all that together, we have to conclude that eviction isn't just a condition of poverty, it's a cause of it, it's making things worse, and it's leaving a deep and jagged scar on the next generation, which means we can't fix poverty in America without fixing housing.